So a couple of examples, we talked about community cloud or hybrid sort of stuff before. One of the projects we did uh, a few years ago was for the Department of Defense. And that was essentially setting up a community cloud for those guys, uh, DISA, and basically that all of the Department of Defense uh, organizations can come in and essentially use a cloud service. Highly secure, they have internal and external facing pieces, but they chose to do that for their constituents, as it were. Right? That's a highly secure environment, has specific requirements that they gave us, and we delivered on that, and essentially it services all of Department of Defense. Not that all of them have taken it up, but the opportunity is there. Another issue is with the amount of data that's out there, with the cloud providers essentially aggregating everything that's going on, you do run risks, and these are new risks. An example is Project Aurora, which came up last year. Project Aurora was a targeted attack against software vendors, including major cloud providers like Google and uh, Adobe, wherein uh, the attackers came in from a foreign nation, in this case China, targeted specific individuals in those companies, uh, went after a flaw in a combination of Messenger and IE, got to the source code of those companies and pulled it all the way back to their labs. So essentially the source code of some of these providers has been fully exposed. Right? This became a national incident, Hillary Clinton got involved, rattled the saber a little bit, Microsoft got blamed for flaws in IE6, but it does also uh, show the requirement to ensure that the cloud provider is following the right security practices. And again, coming back to my reference to SAS 70, that generally doesn't cut it. So we need a little bit more, we need to understand what they're doing. To me though, that doesn't sound like a cloud problem. That sounds like a overall holistic security problem of you need to make sure that you have an end-to-end -end security model inside your company that, that actually looks at things like IE6, which is, what, 10 years old now? Uh, probably 10-year-old technology, somebody's got to have found a hole in it. Uh, are, there, are there things like, um, in the scenario of choosing between a public cloud or a private cloud, are there specific considerations to either side that make one or the other more or less secure, or is it they just have different security risks? So, first off, you're right. There are a lot of parallels between traditional security and what we're saying there. The issue is, uh, as I mentioned, the cloud providers aggregate for many companies. So if you think about someone attacking an individual company and getting their data out, be it source code or whatever, that impact is only for that company. When you think about someone attacking a, a cloud provider and their source code being exposed, that means all the companies that they host are being exposed. So the, the attack and the risk uh, is essentially the same, but the value of that attack is much greater. The impact of uh, uh, that attack is much greater because it affects so many more players. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we think about uh, what it is uh, in, in assessing the providers, we essentially need to understand, am I going to exposed if they get exposed? And are they going to pay me if uh, something goes wrong? I wonder if another thought on that, on selection, is, is uh, security in my mind is just one thing to think about when you select that vendor. The, the whole idea about cloud is this notion of delivering a, a, a compute service as a service, right? So uh, what, what will you, you know, the first premise is, what is it, what is the business value that we need to get for the business itself? What problem is the cloud provider trying to solve? And then when we look at that, start from the business, look back. What is, what is something that's, what is, what, is, what is the business need to drive revenue, to, to, to have a profit, to make better profit? And then look at that from a business perspective and determine which purveyor can provide the best service at that point in time for the best cost with the right security exactly. uh, com, you know, exactly. considerations in mind. I mean, that's the value of, of, of cloud, really. So really, that's kind of a, a total cost of ownership piece that, that is true in, in any business decision. Absolutely. Are there, is there any kind of a push, have you guys seen any kind of a push for there to be sort of a um, open architecture in the sense that if I choose one cloud solution now, I can get my data out or I can get whatever my project was out and go somewhere else in the future? Or is, is that something that anybody's even considering? So there are a number of efforts underway. You've got some more proprietary things like Microsoft saying, if you're in our environment, you can move to our cloud environment but will also allow other providers to use our essentially Azure type solutions in their environment. So there will be a, an ecosystem that is evolving there. 
Then you move over and you look at uh, what Google and Salesforce and VMware are doing. Uh, they're essentially putting J2E into the cloud. So as a platform play, uh, there's all those sorts of things. You then move on to Rackspace and a number of other players who are essentially creating or trying to create a standard stack uh, that people can rely on if you go to providers that support that. The issue is this is evolving very rapidly. Uh, there are lots of reasons why people want to create uh, lock-in, right? We don't want people moving, but we want to appear like we can allow them to move. And it's assessing whether you're willing to go into that, not just a risk analysis, cost benefits analysis, business side, and all of those sorts of things. And I actually uh, uh, just have a book out today, funnily enough, Silver Clouds, Dark Linings, A Concise Guide to Cloud Computing, where I go into all of these sorts of... I think that was a commercial. <laughs> it felt good to me, though. It felt good to you? It felt uh, good to me. So uh, we go into that, but... Uh, if only we had a copy here. <laughs> right. uh, as an e-book, it's kind of difficult, but okay, okay. Uh, we digress slightly. We uh, the, the point is, being able to assess from top to bottom what the value of what you're getting is, and then are you required to move? Can you get the data out? And this is actually one of the fundamental things, whether you're talking about the business side or the security side, is understanding what data you're putting out, are you going to be able to get it back? And then the value of the uh, services that you're getting on that data. Because it's basically processing data and doing things with it that create the business value. Right? So you may be able to get all your data back, but if you start putting IP into the cloud in terms of, here's our business process, are you going to be able to replicate that in someone else's cloud? And that's actually the big, bigger issue than whether you can move the data back and forth. So from an infrastructure perspective, another thing we're starting to see there is that customers want to take um, advantage of technologies they're already using, for example, in the virtualization layer, things like VMware, where, that have been uh, propagated almost as a de facto standard. And what they're doing now is VMware is releasing uh, tools, for example, as part of that layer, where they're leveraging the, the uh, vendors that already have that solution in their stack and these customers that have the solution that are comfortable with that, that know how to run the workloads, create the workloads, and what's happening now is they're creating an SLA-based tool to shift those workloads from place to place. So that's just taking advantage of the current industry development, uh, you know, the implementation of commonly used tool sets and virtualization, and it really allows the customer to look at their, at their assets, what they're doing, what their uh, forecasted demand are, your, their peaks and things of that nature, and, and choose to have another alternative uh, you know, to burst out to help them on those times where, where they're really exceeding capacity. So we're going to see more and more of that happen, I think, as the industry matures. All right, well, I'm sure we could probably go on and on about the cloud for a couple more hours here, but uh, I, I think we're, we're probably about time, so we'll wrap it up. So thanks, guys. Um, these are the HP Cloud Advisors. Uh, is, there a, is there a website where people can uh, find you? Sure. HP.com slash go slash cloud advisors.